Yo, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. Here to talk about another live service game not doing all too well. Now, obviously, we've had a lot of live service games recently kind of, you know, come out. And there's a lot of them that come out. You have your Helldivers 2s of the world that do really, really well. But for the most part, a lot of them don't. And another one has seemingly flopped. And that is Foam Stars, a game that actually didn't even come out on PC, which I thought... You know, it was a very, very questionable move right out the gate. I don't know if Sony decided to pay for exclusivity on Foam Stars. If they did, I don't know if that was the wisest decision. But let's talk about it because the player account for this game has completely fallen apart. And it illustrates a bigger picture with live service in totality. Now, the interesting thing about Foam Stars is that for whatever reason, it was a PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 console exclusive. Truly, for games like this... They really should be on every single platform. You should try to get these games on every platform and try to increase the exposure of the game to as many platforms as possible. I don't know if Sony was of the mindset that, hey, we got to pay money to get Foam Stars as an exclusive. I don't know. Like, I'm all for uh, wanting exclusive games. I can understand that. I'm not into timed exclusives and that nonsense, but I can understand from a Sony standpoint, yo, we got to get these compelling games as exclusives. I don't know why they looked at Foam Stars and was like, this is a this is the game we got to sign a deal for. I don't know if that was the case, but it being on PS4 and PS5 exclusively makes absolutely no sense. Now, this is actually a pay-to-play game. It's $29.99. However, the caveat to that is it was a PlayStation Plus essential launch game back in February. When February kicked off and Foam Stars dropped, Foam Stars was baked into PS Plus Essential as a free title. And guess what? As an online title, you need PS Plus to play the game anyway, so... Essentially, for the first month, it was a free game, and it's not like it's a free game just for that month. No, you add it to your library as long as you're a Plus subscriber, it is yours to own forever. So it essentially was a free-to-play game, a kind of free-to-play game, I guess, for a month, but then, you know, most people redeemed it, however you want to interpret it. However, a game like this that did come out as a free plus title has now dropped nearly 95% of its player base on PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 going back to February of 2024 as noted on True Trophies using gameplay data from over 3.1 million active PSN accounts courtesy of the partnership they have with Game Insights. We had previously reported that Foamstar's initial PS5 and PS4 player account had already began to fall shortly after the game's day one as one of of February 2024's monthly PS Plus titles. Since then, two months later, the player account has dropped 94.92% from its debut player account data taken from the week ending on Sunday, April 7, 2024. Now, usually, I am not a big fan of these statistics. Stats like this, um, they can be very misleading, especially how sometimes they are baked into certain headlines. Like, I remember when Elden Ring came out and a couple months after Elden Ring's release, I, I remember vividly seeing a headline that was like, Elden Ring has lost 80% of its player base from launch, or some number like that, 70%, 80%, something like that. Like, yeah, bro, Elden Ring is a single-player game. People are gonna play through it. There are gonna be some people that that are going to do New Game Plus 87, but most people are going to play through it once, maybe twice, and then they're going to move on, and then there's just going to be those people that, you know, bought Elden Ring, didn't know what they were going to get themselves into, and then drop the game, but you get the idea. In a lot of cases, games are always... 99% of the time is going to peak day one or week one. There are some games that buck the trend. A PAL world, you know, peaked over the course of the first two weeks. Helldivers 2 peaked over the course of a little bit of time, especially with the server issues. But a game's interest is always going to be at a fever pitch at its peak day one or week one, generally speaking. It's very hard to recapture the interest, although... You'll have titles that drop expansions, like I'm sure, based on, uh, you know, the rumblings I'm hearing about Destiny 2 right now. I think Destiny 2 is going to beat its uh, all-time concurrent player count when Final Shape drops, for example. I, that, that's an opinion I have. Don't come at me for having that opinion. I'm talking about Steam concurrent player count because I was looking at the graph yesterday just because one of my boys was talking about Final Shape. But you get the idea. Generally speaking, you're not going to have the majority of games beating their day one or week one concurrent player count and peak concurrent player count 
months after release. But to lose 95% of your concurrent player base, that is a staggering number, especially because it's only been two months. When you look at games that are actually successful uh, as far as the live service model goes, Helldivers 2 is a fairly good case study of where you want to settle in at two months after release. Now, obviously, Helldivers 2 has been a widely successful game, and it's on the opposite end of success from Foam Stars, but to give you an idea, Helldivers 2, as far as Steam concurrent player counts, was around the 400,000 number as far as concurrent players go on Steam. It peaked at exactly 458,709 concurrent players. Right now, there's 206,000 players playing the game, and its 24-hour peak was 253,000 players. A significant drop-off. Like, let's be real. Even for a successful game like Helldivers 2, you could easily make a, an article that's like, Helldivers 2 has lost 50% of its player base, and... To the naked eye, as a title, as a headline, that sounds very like, oh, that's pretty alarming. It lost 50% of its player base. But losing 50% of your player base, as wild as that sound, as far as concurrent peak goes, that's not a big deal. 50% is a perfectly suitable number to fall off from from your all-time peak uh, a few months ago after release. That is totally fine. In the case of Foam Stars, we're talking two months later, when you're getting the numbers like 95%, Okay, that is getting pretty, pretty dicey. And Foam Stars was one of those games that uh, there were people that played it and actually did enjoy the game. But we'll go back to the same thing as far as live service games go. Live service games is not going to be an avenue where a lot of games can pop off. That is just not the reality. It is literally, let me reiterate that, literally impossible for the majority of live service games to pop off because while money is finite to a lot of people, you know what's even more finite than money? Time. And what is the goal of live service games? It is to invest your time into the game. That's what the publisher wants. They want you to invest time in perpetuity for a lengthy period of time. Well, guess what? If there's 80 billion live service games on the market, nobody can juggle multiple live service games at the same time. Maybe you could do two, maybe three at most, but for the most part, you gotta be uh, invested into your games. Like most people, and this is anecdotal from who I speak to, usually they have one live service game that they're super into at any given time, and then they have other games that they're playing to complement those experiences. Like, for example, one of my boys, like I was saying, super into Destiny 2, he pretty much isn't into any other live service game at the moment, but he'll play other games uh, outside of that, you know, and if you want to consider, like, he'll play Assassin's Creed, like, I guess that's a live service game as well, that's just a monetized single player game that is live servicey, but you get the idea, for a game that lives and dies off of its player base and its investment from the players, those games, at the end of the day, they all can't be successful, it is literally impossible just when you look at it from a time standpoint, and Helldivers 2, all the credit in the world, it's been a success, even though you can say it's lost 50% of its user base. 50% is nothing. Congrats to you, Helldivers. And especially, it doesn't even matter what percentage you lose, but what type of player base are you stabilizing at? If you're stabilizing at 150,000 players that uh, are spending money at the game, or even a portion are spending money, bro, you got a W, take your W all the way, and you won the live service game. In the case of Foam Stars, when you lose 95% of your player base uh, this quickly, that's dicey dicey, but at the same time, this is a reality with the live service model. There is just so much time. It's not like in the case of Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2 comes out in October, you buy the game, you're probably playing that game for two weeks to a month at most. Like, how many people are just gonna play Spider-Man 2 over and over again? Maybe y'all exist, but usually you're gonna finish up your time with Spider-Man 2 in a month at most. Most people that I talk to finished up Spider-Man 2 within like a week, so... You know, that's generally how it goes when you talk about those styles of games. You buy it for $70, you play through it, and then guess what? You're ready to spend another $70. But when you have these games that, like a Foam Stars, which, you know, it is $30, but most people got it for free... The idea is you can monetize it on the back end and you could get player investment on the back end, whether it be, you know, updates, expansions, whatever you want to do. You try to monetize these games on the back end. Um, that's just not possible if you don't have player investment. Where in the case of Spider-Man 2, you know, maybe you won't have player investment for a lengthy period of time. But once you got the $70, clean it up, you got your W, 
you sold millions upon millions of copies, and the game was a home run success. Now, obviously, Spider-Man 2 is at the pinnacle of single-player game successes in that market as well. You'll have your Immortals of Avaeums. You'll have your Forspokens. You'll have your Callisto Protocols. It's not just like doing a $70 single-player game is going to be a W, but they're different business models, and I would say that in the case of Spider-Man 2 style of business model, there's more room, just generally speaking, based on the time element of it, for more games to succeed right Rather than the live service model where the top level games in the live service model, oh, they're going to be eating very well. They're going to be making tons of money, but you're talking about the top X percent. I really can't quantify it as far as how many percentage there is because I'm not following every live service game, but the bottom majority percent... Bro, you just sunk a lot of money into it, and they're going, to, they're going to the wayside. That's why you have so many publishers being like, we're going to release 25 live service games by X year. Like, I think it was 25 live service games that Sony was saying, or it was a ridiculous amount. Ubisoft was saying the same thing. Th th nobody in their right mind thinks all of those games are going to succeed. It's literally impossible. There is no fathomable way for every single one of those games to succeed. But if you're releasing 25 games just by you know, mathematical standpoints, if 10% of those games succeed, two to three games of those 25 succeed, bro, we got two to three money makers for several years, that's a W, or I assume to them that would be a W. But that is gonna do it for me, guys. Again, this is yet another flop as far as live service games go, and I think it's just the reality when there's so many of these styles of games coming out that People's time is finite. Like, you know, some people can be rich and they can drop a lot of money and they can buy a lot of games. But at the end of the day, live service games is tied to player investment. Player investment equals players' time and time we cannot buy more of. That it's just, that, that's not reality. Uh, and people's time is valuable and they're going to spend their time doing the things they want to do and the things that are of the highest priority to them. And I guess playing Foam Stars isn't that but that'll do it for me let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section down below as always thanks for watching and i will catch you guys in the next one peace out Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.